Welcome back. In the last episode, we were talking about how you can stage, seed, and run pair applications. In this episode, we're going to talk about productionizing the application uh, release strategy. Uh, so let's let's uh, refresh our memory slightly. We built an app uh, that we can that's being seeded, and we can run that app from the key, either on this machine or on any machine that has an internet connection. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the pair release command. So we've started in the very first episode with pair init to create the project, pair dev to develop the application, pair stage to synchronize the files from our file system to the peer-to-peer -peer storage, pair seed to expose the application so that it can be executed with pair run. And now we're looking at pair release so that we can manage uh, production strategy. So let's take a look with pair help release. Just like seed and stage, you can use a channel name to reference the uh, key for the application indirectly. What we're going to do, we already staged to dev, but if you're wanting to release for production purposes, we might want to change the channel name to something more suitable like production. And this is going to create a new key. Before I run that though, I'm going to do a, add a flag called dry run. Let's run that. We can see that it gives us a diff of the files that it's going to add to this new channel, this new key, which uh, is printed out at the top and the bottom of stage, 40A5 in this case, starting. But it doesn't actually complete the write to the peer-to-peer uh, -peer storage because we specified dry run. This is extremely useful when you're uh, making changes to your project and you're wanting to uh, push those changes to go live uh, and you need to know that the changes that you think you're making are in fact the changes that are happening. So the dry run flag is something we use all of the time when we're uh, taking uh, content live, taking application functionality live. So I'm happy with that dry run. Now I'm going to stage uh, to production for real. Marvelous. The pair seed command can also reseed. So if you have a, a machine that doesn't have the application on it, you can still say pair seed and then pass it the key of that application and it will immediately begin reseeding. So this means that you can uh, stage and seed locally and just seed whenever you want to. You can close that seeding process afterwards if you have another machine somewhere that's always reseeding. In terms of releasing though, let's just take a quick look at the release command again. Pair help release. So to mark a release, all we need to do is run pair release and then provide either the key or the channel name. So we can write pair release production and this will mark the app so that any time it's run in the future, it will be locked to the, the version, the current version, the current state until we mark a new release. So let's do that. So pair run works differently depending on whether you're running an application that has been released or an application that has not yet been released. For us, we have uh, two uh, keys. We have the dev key, which is the YUQ7 key, and we have the uh, production key, which is the 40A5 key. 
If we run for the A5 key, if we make a change to the application, for instance, just a quick If I add an exclamation point to the create button, for instance, we can take a quick look with pair dev. There it is. We can stage to the dev channel. We can seed that channel. And then we can see that key, sorry. And then we can run from our development key and we can see, yes, uh, it says create with an exclamation mark. We've already marked a release on the 40A5 key. So if we stage to the production channel, which is the 40A5 key, like so. And then we try to run that key. We'll see that the create button doesn't have the exclamation point. So if we wanted to uh, make it so that the production app shows that exclamation point, we can mark a new release on the new staged uh, application on the on the latest for the latest version of the application. If we wanted to preview the changes for production, we can use the checkout flag. So if we do pair help run, we can see that it has a checkout flag that can be set to either a number, which is the uh, version length uh, for the for that key. Uh, we can set it to release or we can set it to staged. Release is the default as long as the application has been released. Otherwise, staged is the default because there is no release yet. On the 4DA key, the R production channel key, uh, it has been released. So if we want to preview the release with the exclamation point, we can say pair run key checkout equals staged. And this time when the application opens, we're seeing the exclamation mark on the create button. Users who are consuming the production application won't see this. Only uh, developers who want to see the latest preview of a production application would really be using this. But it's a great way to uh, understand what's happening and manage uh, uh, development and production versions. So all you need then is pair init, pair dev, pair stage, pair seed, and pair release. In, in terms of distributing this to users, you can provide the key for the application and the user can run pair run key. Or you can wrap an executable around the command pair run key and distribute that to users. And in that way, we have a full production strategy. There is more to this. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, for instance, look at the contents of a particular application. I'm going to make a new folder here called dump out. I'm going to run pair dump and I'm going to pass it the production key and dot to reference the current directory. So you can see there that's put all of the, the contents that we staged into the peer-to-peer -peer storage, it's put them back onto disk. So this, so we can view 
at any point the entire source of our, of our, our production application. Finally, we can talk a little bit about uh, a more advanced strategy when you're working with more people together where we can use multisig. As it stands when you stage and you release, it's all signed by you on your machine via Pair. Pair does this for you, but it's signed by you on your machine. With multisig, we can have multiple people signing off on a production release before it goes live. Uh, this can be combined with Keat in a way where uh, the collaboration and the signatures, signatories that are required uh, can all work through the Keat interface. We'll talk more about this in future, but do know we've got that covered. Until next time, thanks for watching. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Pair Runtime Development moves fast. So come chat with us on Keat and share your feedback. There's an invite in the description and on pairs.com. Remember, the future is peer-to-peer -peer and the future is now.